What's up guys, how you all doing? For today's video I'm going to put to the test Walmart survival gadgets. This is probably the cheapest brand for survival items you can find out there. Let me know in comments below if there is any that is cheaper. This brand produces so many gadgets and they're all about between 5 bucks to maybe 25 bucks. Some very very few maybe goes up a little bit higher but most of them are very very cheap. So what I'm gonna do is put them to the test and see if they're actually pretty useful and work really great. Alright, let's get to it. For the first gadget I'm gonna put to the test this puck axe. Let's open it up. Boom. Very small axe, almost like a hatchet but it's super super tiny, look how small that is. Almost not enough weight to it, but at the same time it is smaller than a hatchet. Usually those things are a lot bigger and there's a little cover, beautiful. So this is like almost like a knife, except with a little bit more weight. So we're going to do a chop test. Hopefully it will be plenty to chop and split some logs. Alright, let's do it. Even though they call it pack axe, look how awesome that is. It fits into my pocket and I can actually jump over the stuff. Boom, it's not in the way. How cool is that? Very, very small, but is it doable and useful? Let's find out. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to chop with this thing anything big, but there is a tree that is pretty much dead. Let's see what happens. You know what? It's getting too hot now. Take my sweater off. As you can see, it's possible. Definitely not the biggest axe out there. But if you pace yourself, look at that. That log is dry and it's chopping it. Almost halfway. Maybe it's best to have gloves, but check this out. It's chopping it pretty good. Almost there. If I'm gonna continue without gloves, I'm gonna get a bunch of blisters. But look at that, almost done. It's halfway through. So chop test definitely works. Check this out. Now just jiggling back and forth how to chop. But still, this is pretty size thickness. And it's a very dry wood. It's been dead for a long time. Is it easy to chop it? And also if you need a bunch of sticks for firewood, instead of breaking it, you can really chop them up. There you go. Nice. Sweet. You know what I mean, right? You can just continue. So you know what, pretty decent. Plenty of weight, not too heavy at the same time, super light. Also could be pretty nice throwing Leo hatchet. I'm not good at throwing them, but there you go. Really cool, I like it a lot. For how much it costs, I think it's worth it. For the next gadget I got here, magnesium fire starter. So magnesium flint. This is the cheapest one out there as well. It doesn't even come with a steel striker. It's supposed to, maybe they forgot to put it in. But good thing that I have pack axe, I'm gonna use that. This right here all is a magnesium or some sort of supplement. We're gonna scrape that off. As you can see with the pack axe, it is actually very, very easy. Let's see if it's going to be easy to scrape it with this side. You know what, it's probably easier to scrape it with the back edge because it doesn't dig in as much and you can actually scrape a lot of it and much, much easier versus this side. It kind of gets stuck. Actually, now it's started, it's a little bit easier to... You see, it gets stuck, so I would use the back edge. So as you can see, there is a lot of magnesium. 
Now, let's see how well it strikes. Again, with back edge, much better. I wasn't even trying to hit magnesium, but as you can see, it hit it anyway. If you have good steel, it sparks a lot. Look at that. Hits up all that leftover magnesium. Sharp edge doesn't strike as much as this dull edge. You see how much more sparks there is? You know what? It's worth it. This is really, really nice. I like it. So this time I'm actually going to try to start a fire, get some dry grass, coconut husk. Going to put some magnesium on it, just to make sure it starts really, really well. Look at those shavings. Not bad. Look how shiny it gets. Okay, and now I'm going to use the dull side. And boom, one strike, it's on fire. Check this out. Can use the axe to lift it up, move it around. Very nice, it's burning really, really well. So these two tools together actually makes it a lot easier to use this cheap magnesium flint. And look at this dry coconut husk, burns so well. Very nice, if I open it up, it's going to burn even more. So these two tools together are amazing to start a fire and chop wood. So I chop a bunch of twigs and wood and bigger logs. I got myself a nice bonfire going. I don't have to show you how it's going to get done, but you know, it's pretty easy on a good dry weather with this magnesium flint, no problem. And for the next two gadgets, this is flint striker and this is emergency tinder kit and it's a waterproof flint striker so let's see what these two things are all about by the way this is not a magnesium flint this is like a feral rod i think that's what they called so there's quick instructions but we already know how to use it gotta scrape off that black part wherever you're going to strike it you know what so far it's not so good Look, it barely strikes. There you go. Strikes pretty good, but as you can see, not that powerful. I bet with the pack axe, it's going to strike way more. The sparks actually fly everywhere. Let me show you from far away. As you can see with the doll side, so much better. If you have a big knife, it sparks so much, look at that. But if you try to strike with the steel they give you, look at the difference. It looks horrible. It looks like it doesn't even work. So they shouldn't even provide this thing because it doesn't work that well at all. You need something heavy to work these cheap strikers. Look how much. So this is probably biggest misconception. Whenever you buy those strikers and they don't work that well compared to expensive ones, because expensive ones, you can use this little steel and it will spark a lot. But with these cheap ones, you need something big like a knife and use a dull edge and it'll strike a lot every time and look I'm gonna try to strike it from far away and use this big knife or pack axe almost two three four there you go five and that was from far away check this out I'm put this to the side you don't even need magnesium let me use this one If you're using this cheap steel, steel works, but not as easy. I had to go like three times to strike it. And to make things easier, you can get the fire tender. If you don't have coconut husk, you can buy this instead. And it's supposed to be waterproof, so we'll find out how well is waterproof is this. What's inside here? 
that's what I'm curious about. Check this out. A really tiny box. Oh wow, no way. This is cool. I know what it is. You put in there like a Zippo lighter fill and then it's going to strike. I did not know this is what it was. Whoa, this is powerful. Look how much sparks it gives. And again, if you run out of fill, this feels like plastic. Usually they are metal. You can just use this. Ferro rod, missed it. Missed it again. Okay. And boom, set it on fire. How cool is that? You see, you can start the fire with this, no problem. But again, the original one is full metal and a little bit bigger. This is all plus. One positive thing, it's a lot lighter, but it might break on you. But the ferro rod is very, very powerful. Still can start the fire if you out of fill. But what it's made for is putting some lighter fluid in there. So let's do that. You see lighter fluid right here, any kind will do. And then we're just gonna fill it up. I actually took a lot of lighter fluid and as you can see there is a wick so this is going to be like a match once you strike it let me demonstrate it for those people who haven't seen this thing and also we're going to put to the test the waterproofness of it now that there is a lighter fluid in there take this out all this the wick is soaked then we're gonna strike it one more time there you go it was a little bit oversaturated with the lighter fluid. But now you have a match to start the fire. And as you can see, it's windy, it's not blowing out. <laughs> okay, then you can dip it one more time in the lighter fluid and stack it again. And it's light up this time from the first time. Look how windy it is. It's burning really, really well. You can start the fire with that kind of match really, really easily. Also, the wick is replaceable. <laughs> now, let's see if it's waterproof. Uh, it definitely pretty much sunk, but I expected for it to be sunk, but in case it's going to get wet, hopefully it's not a problem like they say. I'm gonna dry it off, shake it off. Looks pretty dry. Just wipe off this striker as well. So that way it will produce sparks again. Okay, open it. It should be all good. There you go. And boom, it's on fire. Oh, this is super windy right now, which is a good test. It burns anyway, even though it was so windy, it almost went out, but still burning. Look at that. Very, very windy. It's still burning. Super good. So, whoa, it's actually going into my finger. Look at that wind, and that much has no problem. Unless it has this abrupt wind, like, like that. That's too much. But with this constant heavy wind, no problem. One, two. Three. Let me move up the wick a little forward. There you go. And the best part is also the wick, if it's burned out too much, it's easy to replace it. Never seen this plastic one. Usually they come in metal, but as you can see, it works just as well, and it is waterproof. Love it. Also, it comes with this awesome little box, and let's put to the test this fire tinter. Looks like it's cotton, sucked in in some kind of residue. You see how it's on the walls like this? Oh wow, pretty cool. Okay, let's see if we're going to start it after unrolling it. You see, it's like a cotton inside of it, so we want those fibers. There you go, and now it's on fire. After a few strikes, boom, you can put it on this pack axe so that way you can carry it somewhere to set it with the twigs and dry grass. It burns really, really well. Let's find out if this thing's waterproof. They definitely float on water, but let's see if they keep the water away. Okay, shake it off. Let's say it got wet, hopefully they're going to work anyway. What I'm gonna do is unfold it like I did with the other one. 
hopefully it didn't suck in any of that water definitely fluffs up really, really well I have no idea what they saturated with definitely not wax it's something else okay this thing been in the water let's see what happens and boom look at that three strikes even though it was wet no problem it gets on fire really really well do you hear that even though it's moist it burns anyways very very nicely and for the last gadget, this is expendable water carrier. I honestly never seen one like that before. So what we're going to do is fill it up with water and let's see how much it's going to expand because it's pretty thin. And how many gallons is this? 2.11 US gallons or 8 liters of water. That's a lot of water that I can fill it up. This is how it's going to expand whenever you fill it up with water. Okay, let's try to do that. I'm just gonna fill it up with the regular water. Let's see if it's going to expand by itself. I should probably show you from this angle. I think with the weight it's going to start expanding by itself, which is cool. Usually those expandable water bottles, you have to expand it yourself. This one looks like expanding by itself with the water weight. Pretty awesome, okay. Wow, it on the bottom really expanded a lot already. I'm just gonna keep going. Also, once I'm gonna pull all the water out, will it uh, fall back together by itself really easily or will it be stretched out because of a cheap plastic? Okay, this is full and definitely expanded a lot. And something I have to point out, check this out, there is also a nozzle. What an awesome option. 8 gallons of water, I mean 8 liters of water, 2.1 gallons. Very very nice, looks so beautiful. Now the coolest part is I can lay it on the side of the table and move this to the side, tighten it back up again. There you go. So that way whenever you need to refill some water in the cup or wash your hands, you can just turn this and because it's going to compress together back again, it's going to flow a lot of water, then you can close it real quickly. But when you wash hands, I would put it on very, very little bit. So that way you don't waste a lot of water. You can wet your hands, soap it up, then get it really, really soapy, and then use it to wash off your hands really, really quickly. I got here storm matches, so windproof and waterproof. We're gonna put that to the test. Hopefully it's going to work really well. There you go. Boom, I guess it's protective cotton right here. You can also use it as a fire starter, but we're gonna close it back up for now. And we're gonna stick it into the water, this whole case, and let's see if it's actually going to be waterproof. And hopefully it will flow too, because it feels pretty light. Okay, let's see how they're going to strike, first of all. Whoa, this is super windy right now. They burn really, really good. It'll be pretty easy to start a fire with, especially if you hold it like that, don't let it burn out. Pretty nice. Okay, I got here water. This thing all the way tight. Let's drop it. Nice, floatable. So even if you're on a boat and drop your matches or you cross in the lake, and it's going to fall out, it's going to float, so that way you're not going to lose it. And I don't see any bubbles come out. Very, very nice packaging so far. The only problem is the striker pretty much now ruined. Every time it gets wet, it's gonna be done. Much just looks good. I'll take a few out right now. And also there is a placement striker side right here. It's actually too big anyways. Oh well, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, but you have a striker anyway. And as you can see, it works. This time it's burns even a little longer. Now you can just hold it sideways. Hopefully the wind don't take it off. Now that the good stuff burnt out. You see that much last quite a bit of time. So that way you can start a fire. But the coolest part is, check this out. I'm gonna dip it into the water shake it off, wipe it off a little bit, boom. 
it strikes and burns anyway. Dip it into the water. Ah, you know what? Original matches when you put them in the water, they burn even when you take it out. These ones are cheaper, so they don't do that. They are awesome, they burn really good, but they don't burn under water. Those UCO, more expensive matches, actually burn under water as well. But these ones are cool too. Why would you need uh, matches to burn under water? So this is just as good, except the burn time is a lot faster, that's for sure. And the most important is, even if your match is going to get really, really soaked and wet, into the water, take it out, wipe it off, because it's not going to burn while it's wet. But it is waterproof to where if you wipe it off, it's still going to strike. Super windy right now, so they are windproof. You have a little bit of a time to start a fire. You see it's still burning. Very nice, I like these matches. For the next survival gadget, I got here fire paste. I honestly never seen that before. Look at that, you're supposed to just put that paste on a piece of log, a dry piece of log, and it's supposed to catch on fire. So I'm really intrigued. Hopefully it's actually going to work. Check this out. I will need a bunch of small twigs to start the fire. Just get a bunch of twigs and you can break them up with a big knife like that, no problem. Okay, let's see how good this fire paste is. Pop this open from this side right here. Boom. Whoa, check this out. And then I'm going to try to strike it with the fire steel. The one that I used last time. Almost. Let, there you go. That's how you would want to start it. Just hold it like this and get a bunch of sparks like that. With a big knife it's pretty easily. And wow, check this out. You can actually carry it around like a fire torch. Pretty cool, isn't it? Wow, it burns really, really well. Didn't expect for it. I never seen a fire paste fire starter before. So obviously what you're going to do next is just add on small twigs. So that way you can get the fire going pretty, pretty fast. With that fire paste, it makes it super easy as you can see. And if you feel like the fire going out, you can just stick more fire paste on top of it. And if you feel like fire going out, you can get paste like this and chuck it down that way. Maybe use a knife or something. That's kind of cool, that way you can rub it up on all the twigs and it's going to burn really, really fast. Look how windy it is and has no problem starting everything on fire. This is amazing because it's one of a kind, you can really stick it on the twigs all over and not worry about the fire starting just dropping into the wood and not going to burn where it's supposed to be. So you know what, honestly I think this is probably one of the best fire starters I have seen. Look how windy that is. And with that fire paste right here and some right here, no problem, it's burning and not blowing out. Let me show this to you guys one more time. Grab my little stick, dump a bunch of paste in. You don't need even that much. It will last you a really, really long time. And then we're going to strike it. There you go. And it starts on fire. And it's going to burn a while. I love that fire face so much because you could really spread it around anywhere and it's going to burn on the, on the whole stick so that way you can set it down like that look it's whole knife is burning so you can really get the smaller twigs going on fire instead of having a piece of fire starter if it drops it's not going to burn as well pretty awesome idea I love it look at that for the next survival gadget, I got here macro lantern. So this is probably the smallest lantern I ever seen. 
So pretty unique product for sure. Open it, let's see what kind of batteries it takes in the first place. Boom. 2032, yep. Very common batteries, you can buy them anywhere. Light, flash, and ergo. So let's go in the dark room, let's see how bright it's going to be. So I'm in the dark room, let's turn it off. Super dark. Turn it on, pretty bright. So let's see if I can actually see the steps. Obviously the camera don't give us much justice, but I kind of can see it barely. But I do like it that it is, it is like a lantern. I can actually see a little bit over the floor because of flashlight. And the coolest part, it illuminates 360. I don't have to point it anywhere. Just hang it somewhere, boom, just like a light bulb. Super cool, isn't it? So let's say you're sitting in your survival bunker, power went out, you can pull out, turn this tiny flashlight on, and guess what, you can see all the walls around here. Boom. Not super bright lantern, but you gotta remember, this is a super tiny lantern, and you can see a lot out of this tiny thing. For the next gadget, we got here camp soap or survival soap. In any situation, you need to keep up with your hygiene or you know, you might get sick. So, there is little soap strips like that. Whoa, how cool is that? All you need is a little bit of water. Just grab a tiny little bit of water. Remember this gadget I put to the test in the last video? And then you just wipe it off. And boom, look at that. My hands are soaping up. Let me get a little bit more water. And if you feel like you don't have enough soap, you can just get two soap strips. And that way, every time you get yourself a brand new soap, you don't want to touch it with really wet hands, but there you go. If you put a little bit of water in it, it dissolves. Soap strips, and there's a lot of them. Check this out. I'm going to take a few of them this time. Set my hands up, just to show you. Look, it turns into soap. Three pieces right here, way too much soap. It's actually stuck to my finger right here. But that's good, that way you can really soap up your hands. Very, very nice. And then you can turn the water on and de-soap yourself. It says it has 50 sheets, so it will last you 50 hand washes or whatever. So I really like that a lot. Lightweight and really easy to use. And for the last survival, more like a camping gadget, let me show it to you what it's all about. This is an egg carrier. How does this open? Okay, there you go. I'm gonna put a few eggs in here and we're going to put that to the test. Will it break eggs or not? This is the big eggs. Might be a little bit too big for this carrier. But let's stack up a whole bunch right here. Boom. Wow, seems pretty tight. But will they break? Obviously I'm not gonna drop more than that. So now let's open this eggs. Oh, and there is omelette. So although it's pretty nice egg holder, it's not going to protect your eggs if you're gonna drop them a little bit. I got here Sierra saw, is that how you pronounce it? Pocket size, never need sharpening. Camping, backpacking, hunting, fishing, gardening, pruning, trimming. So there's a whole bunch of uses you can do it for. But I really do like it because it's so compact and so tiny. Check this out. And I guess you press it right here, it comes out. And if you wanna fold it back together, press it, boom. Just like a folding knife. Okay, let's cut this branch. Whoa, it definitely eats through the wood really, really fast. Ooh, oh no. Look at that, I bend it so bad. Let's see if I can bend it back. So definitely not the most durable thing. So be careful when you cut it. Don't try to bite in too much, then this thing can chew. So maybe turn it. Mm. 
there you go we cut it all the way pretty much let's try to do this again halfway in it's getting stuck so I'll have to turn it it's not bad as long as you have to turn it once in a while but again for this size what do you expect you're going to get this is the smallest packet so I ever seen there you go open it up a little bit that way I can continue cutting it There you go, not bad. It's pretty cool, but it's almost useless because it's too small. It's once you get in, it's getting stuck. So you maybe open it up a little bit this way. So that way you can continue cutting it. Not the most powerful thing. For the next two gadgets, they also sell toilet tissue and tissue on the go. I wish it was Ziploc bag so that way we can reseal it and it would have been waterproof but looks like it's just sticky parts instead but it does not have a hole in it so it doesn't take up that much space and whenever you're done using it you probably could put it back into this plastic bag the only problem with that stuff I see it getting moist really easily so this one could be much much better let's open it up and look how cool it is you open this right here and wow this is much better quality tissue for sure and then lock it pull some more out pull some more out how cool is this it's not waterproof but this is a dispenser so much better than a regular roll of piece of paper toilet paper check out how easy it is what an awesome packaging don't you guys think i love it and it's a double layer this is perfect so obviously why i like it because it's easy to dispense it and if you drop it into the wet grass or something like that the whole roll is not going to get ruined look how awesome that is so easy to dispense it thumbs up for me i never seen a toilet paper on a go like that before and this is just an ingenious packaging definitely would use it for the next survival gadget this is waterproof matches let's see what they're all about come in a big packets like that and they look like a regular matches but if you look closer at them they look very very shiny go dip it into here a little bit and then we're going to use a box and stack them oh it's windy for sure as you can see they burn even though i dump them in the water burn for a while once again stick them in the water you see it all the way shake it off without even wiping it off it's still wet still burn how cool is that dip it all the way into the water take it out shake it off and they burn especially when they two of them when they wet works a little bit better i guess more powerful i don't think the whole box is waterproof so make sure you don't dip the whole box and let's demonstrate take off a couple of matches obviously they wet to double check that they wet we're gonna stick it into there the only thing i'm gonna do is try to wipe this off you know what it still works even though i dumped the whole box in the water so yeah definitely waterproof even the broken match easy to light it up huh? do you see it? they don't light up right away because they are wet they kind of smoke first it's windy out here it's definitely not windproof they just waterproof 
Wow, do you see it smoked for so long and then it lights up. And they burn much better than the regular matches too. And here is the regular matches. Gonna put them in the water. Okay, let's see if the regular match is gonna do the same thing, non-waterproof matches. You see, they smoke, but never light up. Nothing. They're just way too wet. Ah, this one almost, but again, too wet. Let's do the same thing with this matches. Dump them all in the water. Let's take a match out. See what happens. They light up. There you go. This one light up. And look, it's burning really well. Shake it off. There you go. Sometimes it takes two strikes to really get it going. And then even the wooden part is burning because it's waterproof. Oh, fail. Wow, I can't believe this one lied up. The whole thing flew off then when I striked it. Let's try another one. There you go. It's funny how they smoke, smoke and then light up. Obviously this is super extreme. But as you can see, they light up. Don't work as well. Uh, so obviously a little bit better than this much is, but not all the way waterproof, that's for sure. And for the next gadget, we got here emergency stove. Let's see what it's all about. Boom, wow, it's huge. So it's open ups like that, and it holds all this Feels. This is dry feel, so I can probably add on a few tablets into here. One, two, maybe three to make the boiling of water a lot faster. Well, why not do four? We'll try to boil water. And also it's adjustable for your pot right here. You see it? You can do it wider, smaller. Okay, let's light up the fill tablet. Usually it's easier to hold it up like that. There you go. Once it's on fire, you can lay them down and hopefully they'll burn. I'm gonna try to boil the water. Let's see how fast it's going to do it with four tablets. Those tablets burning so much. I can't believe it. They're really, really powerful. Usually that dry field don't burn that powerful. Amazing. I can hear it sizzling already. No way. It's steaming so fast, I can't believe it. Whoa, this is powerful dry field tablets, that's for sure. That's insane. Guys, about three minutes. Do you hear it? It's sizzling so loud. It's hot enough to start making a tea or something. Look at it, on the bottom over there, it's about to start boiling. Once again, it's burning very, very heavily. Let's take this out. Oh yeah, full boil right there, check this out. For the next gadget, I got here another collapsible water carrier. Let's see how many gallons this takes. Five gallons, 18.9 liters. So it takes a little bit more water compared to the other one. And boom, it's collapsed into a pretty small size. Not as doable as the other one I put to the test, but check this out. You can, I guess, feel it. Ouch, hit myself. But you can 
fill it up and it will expand into this square which is a huge five gallon jug boom how cool is that check this out really easy to carry it pretty big but just like a five gallon gas canister except collapsible almost plastic bag but a lot more durable Leo durability test oh wow check this out it didn't even break and this is what like two feet drop whoa that one slapped so well and it works i really thought it would explode super easily and as you can see let me open it even though i dropped it really really hard for my like two or three feet it's still not leaking anywhere how cool is that and then if you need water once again just like with the other one you can fill up the water wash your hands except it holds what three more gallons than the other one a little bit less than that but this is definitely a much bigger one a little bit more compact because it's lightweight and it holds way more water and the coolest part is once it's empty all you have to do is just push this head in all the way in fold it i was surprised too that i thought if i'm gonna keep folding these corners back and forth they're going to crack and break but because they are so flexible i don't think they're gonna break for a while then you can put the cup in you know what guys surprisingly it works really well collapse really good also you can hang it somewhere so you can use it as a shower for the first one i got here sierra saw this is a folding saw i have put to the test a lot of folding saws one of my favorites are silky folding saw let's see if this one is going to do any damage boom folds out like that i wonder what that is i guess it clips in right here so that way it won't come out then you unclip it pull it out that way it can fold back in really really interesting design does not tell me how many inches that is but there you go about what seven inches maybe six first of all for the pulling it's obviously really good for the smaller sticks i'm trying to clear it out so i can chop up the bigger stick it's all that in a way So that's amazing. So for pruning the smaller sticks, as you can see, pretty much no time. Okay, now let's try to do this with the bigger one. This is a really, really thick tree. I doubt it's gonna work that well, but let's try it. It's chopping it through so well right now. Look at that. For this little saw, it's actually going through really, really fast. I might have to change position because it's just so big. That's so almost too small for that tree. I would use this one mostly for pruning and chopping smaller twigs for like firewood or something like that. Whew. I'm almost halfway through. Look at that. That's a lot. And it's a really, really hardy wood. As you can see, it's not like a pine. It's a lot of energy to go through it. And it did pretty fast. I can't believe it. I didn't think it's gonna do anything. And if you're cutting some dead branches for firewood, look how fast that is. Look at that, that is great. Beautiful, for sure. So while I'm not using this, I can stick it in my pocket. Look how small that is, beautiful. For the next item I got here, camp axe. 
once again probably one of the cheapest you can buy even online looks pretty simple hatchet not really an axe but that's what they call it and right here there is a rope cutter I think all right let's try to chop something see how well it's going to do it's not very sharp so I would sharpen it up for sure You know what, it's a lot easier to use this saw, swinging it, it's like a hammer, look at that, it's pretty small twig, I'd say it's nice, it's one piece, looks really durable, not gonna break on you, but you will need to sharpen it up a lot because this is insane how much I have to hit it to go through that stick I'd rather do it with this folding saw so much less energy burning right now and look at it, more than halfway through you see what I'm saying? do you see how many times I had to hit it with the axe, this stuff is so much faster with the twigs like that instead of chopping it you can use this tiny pocket folding saw to cut up yourself a bunch of firewood boom, look how thick that is, really fast this, nice, but not sharp at all remember that, sharpen it up before you use it Boom. For the next gadget I got here, probably the cheapest stone proof matches. Well, they're not really stone proof, but they are kind of match and at the same time fire starter because they're going to burn a really long time. This is the cheapest matches fire starters. This is definitely not stone proof because if really windy or really wet, they might not light up if you drop them in the water. But still, in that design, again, this is the cheapest one. And right here is a box. It's a bit windy right now. Kind of hide it. Okay, it's light up anyways. Now, we can use that to start a fire. Just like build the teepee over it. I have here kind of a moist sticks. But makes sense, right? You just put smaller twigs on top of it and they're going to light up even though if they're going to be a bit wet not a big deal all these sticks are pretty moist but as you can see they starting to burn really really well so just to show you one more time what it looks like whenever you stack them i burn a really really stone and light up so good and this fire starter is going to burn for a while that's for sure i like it it's not ordinary much, that's for sure. This is a huge much. Okay, and then you can stick it under the fire. Two of these things definitely going to start the fire going easily. For the next gadget I got here, universal water bottle carrier. This could be actually really cool. And apparently it will fit any size. So let's figure it out how it works. I guess I have to take all these pieces out. Oh, there you go. There's a Velcro. So I spent about five minutes untangling it. And as soon as I start putting the water bottle in, it was actually pretty easy. So I got here the best camping water bottle. If you guys want to know why, I'll put links in the description for this water bottle for those people who haven't seen it so you put the bottle through like that and then you just grab a velcro and tie them up if it come out there is a latchet set here you put it through boom same thing right here and then you want to push it all the way in and there is one more left if it's tangled, fix it real quick, easy. 
and after you adjust everything this is what it's going to look like this is very very nice i like it and this is a big water bottle so you can put it over your shoulder this looks really nice that way it's not in the way you can go get some water it's close by to you every time you want to take a sip boom super super nice let me know in comments below what do you think about this water bottle carrier i think it definitely makes this water bottle even cooler for the next gadget i got here camp soap it's in a tube so let's see what it's all about looks like a regular soap i like the squeeze bottle a lot actually and obviously you can refill it by using more hand soap very very easy i like that bottle and same thing just open it up soap up your hands this is very useful i like it you know what last time i put to the test soap that is like little films that is kind of a little bit better because it's a lot more light and you know what carrying all that soap could be added on a lot more weight well guys that's pretty much it let me know in comments below what do you think about these gadgets would you use any of them or would you rather buy more expensive ones anyways thank you for watching don't forget to thumbs up this video subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you next time